they built a computer that doesn't work. Yeah, right, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Computers have one job, and it's to compute shit, and then also let me know what you Right, computed. yeah, I gotta have That's the it. output. <laughs> it's a real two-sided coin there. Yeah, they invented my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. No, they invented, like, a sassy teenager. Yes. Right. So did you finish it? I don't know. I'll tell you, Mom. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because secular movies have shit like the Snyder Cut. I'm your host, No Illusions, and Heath will be <laughs> unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'd love to tell you that, Noah. But I can't. <laughs> I demand once an hour you tell me how you're feeling. <laughs> All right. So we're also excited to welcome a brand new guest masochist. Jessica Bloomke Greif is a freelance writer and the co-host of the Friendly Atheist podcast. Jess, welcome God Awful Movies. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We don't usually get that after people like before they've watched the movie. They're like, yeah, yeah, no, I'd love to come on afterwards. Usually not so much. So, <laughs> you know what? I love terrible movies and this one was terrible. So <laughs> we made with the terrible for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's genuinely maybe the worst movie I've ever seen. Like, it, it just in terms of straight up and down, no plot and nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really like even it, it's a contender. It's probably in the top 10 for us. And we've done like 300 of these damn things now. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. All right. So I'll let you do the honor. So tell us just what will we be breaking down today? A really excellent film. I don't call them movies. I call them films. <laughs> called The God Question, in which we don't answer the God question. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> and, and we bitchily don't answer. Oh, so, spoilers. Should I? Is it okay if I spoil the, the twist ending for your listeners? Yeah, oh, by all means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody fucking knows. Right, spoiler alert. <laughs> there will be no plot. There's nothing mm. to spoil. None. I did watch this movie twice through. Ooh. I did watch the ending three times through because the first time I watched it, I was like, did I fall asleep briefly in this movie? Ended? <laughs> right, right. I don't remember falling asleep, but certainly that couldn't be how this movie ended. <laughs> oh. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love getting the silent treatment from your significant other, but they don't possess the answer to a question that nine-year-olds regularly are able to solve, <laughs> you will love this movie. How did anyone think this was a good... This is like installing updates, do not turn off your computer, the movie, right? <laughs> How did anyone think this was going to be a good idea? The chief thing, the verb that you would use to describe what the characters do in this movie is wait. Yup, wait. Wait and talk about spouses. Well, yeah, <laughs> they got to do something to kill the time. Chit chat is second in the list. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's only because this was a time before Candy Crush. If this was a time after <laughs> Candy Crush, we'd have watched these motherfuckers play Candy Crush. No question. Yeah. In real time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and to be fair, I would have was so much more enjoyed a movie where it was just like, ooh, sprinkly ball, sprinkly yeah. ball. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Let me see. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would like to nominate this for the best, worst, clear moral stance. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, sure. that's going to make more and more sense as we go. So I was going to go with best, worst, computer voice. <laughs> All right, so like we they, they got some dude in there that at least at the beginning was kind of trying to do the computerized voice, but he just kind of gives up by the end. He's like, this is, he gets bored with it. And also he's like 14 or something and he sounds it. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best understanding of how computers work. <sighs> I think I understand how computers work less well after seeing this movie. Right? Absolutely. You have to go back to like TV shows from the early 80s to get an mm -hmm. understanding of computers yeah. this bad. They might as well have been using Ghost Rider from the show Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to jam a punch card into the side of a MacBook <laughs> the entire film. It's... It's the vacuum tubes. Change out the vacuum tubes. 
Tell me who Jesus was. <laughs> Got to tie two toasters together. That'll do it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If they can make a whole goddamn movie about waiting, we can certainly wait a minute before we break it down. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll dive into all the dormancy of the God question. <laughs> hey, podcast listener, I'm No Illusions. And I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Jessica Blumke grafe You know, there are many reasons to be a customer of this week's sponsor, AdamandEve.com, like the fact that they got their start as a master's thesis in family planning. Or that they were the first mail order contraceptive business in the U.S., Maybe you like them because the oodles of free stuff you get on top of your order. Or the fact that you get 50% off almost any one item when you use our code AWFUL at checkout. But today, we want to encourage you to shop at adamandeve.com just because of their website. That's right, Noah. Thanks to the folks over at adamandeve.com. When you Google Adam and Eve, instead of being introduced to creationist pseudoscience, homophobic propaganda, or even just a sexist and impossible Bible story, you get a website full of dildos and porn instead. And what better refutation of religion is there than LGBTQ-friendly sex work positive dildos and porn? That's right. So whatever your reason for shopping at adamandeve.com, don't forget to use our code AWFUL. That's A-W-F-U-L, offer code AWFUL at checkout at adamandeve.com. Adamandeve.com, a great company even if they didn't make Ken Ham sad. But they do. They do, yes. And so I said, how will you sell the sandwich with the bread, but you won't just sell me the bread? And what did she say? Well, she was very rude. Guys, guys, guys if I can have your attention, I think I've got the idea for our next big Christian movie. Excellent. What is it? Okay, it's, it's about a supercomputer that discovers the existence of God. Oh, like mm. physically? Like, like it finds him? Well, no. Uh, no, it's a supercomputer. So they put all the knowledge in the world into it, right? And like and mix it around and then it figures out that uh, that God exists. Right. That's mm. not how computers work. It's not? No, uh, no. Computers just compute. Like you can put data into them and they can perform data functions, but computers are just, they're just machines. Well, uh, no, I see the confusion. This would be a supercomputer. Right, but a supercomputer is just a computer. It's not not a computer. I don't understand because Superman is oh, not. Okay, a uh, man. let me let me try this. Um, see this? This is a calculator, right? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. And this is a second calculator. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Right. So both of our calculators, they can add and subtract and divide and stuff. Right. Obviously. Okay. But if I put my calculator on top of her, does Jesus love me? Tell nope, me, I must know. Nope. Still calculator. It's just two calculators now. Do you understand? Oh, I get it. I oh, get it. God. Okay. Okay. So in the movie, it needs to be a super duper computer. You know what? Let's just write the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on four folks standing around a monitor at the Sprague Computing Laboratory at MIT, I guess, in the near future. Yeah, and we're going to make it zero seconds into this movie before they let us know that Microphone Hiss will be the main character. Oh, my God. <laughs> my first note, this movie's audio is brought to us by a Fisher-Price karaoke microphone in a goddamn submarine. <laughs> and ironically, later in this movie, we're going to see so many close-ups on a microphone yes, like yes. as the personification <laughs> of this computer, and it's deeply ironic. Right? <laughs> Especially because there's a moment where the guy, character will be like, can you reduce the background noise? And I'm like, yes, please, <laughs> Jesus. please, please reduce the background. But, but first, he turned the volume all the way up yeah. and then <laughs> reduced the static. See, uh -huh. now the movie's making sense. Later, the computer's going to give him the silent treatment. It's just trying to get a room tone. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So all of these computer programmers, they're gathered around this supercomputer and they make the mistake of showing us the the program that's being <laughs> classic mistake. <laughs> the goat here is amazing. They might as well just have a screen that says run supercomputer, now go, and parentheses, and parentheses, and parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, boy. Yeah, so he hits enter. The computer just starts computering away. Mm -hmm. And we know it's computering away, by the way, because the increasing rate of the pong sound effect that goes with <laughs> all computing. <laughs> so, yep. I think the problem I had was I genuinely do not understand how computer programming works. 
but I'm sure this wasn't part of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know enough to know it's not this. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so their supercomputer goes off and supercomputes, and then we get the credits. Now, a talented filmmaker can make anything seem creepy in the credits with the right music and the right. We do not have a talented filmmaker. So we're just listening to creepy music and looking at a circuit board. <laughs> music note the computer is sneaking up to murder you in a Spanish telenovela. <laughs> like, what tone are they trying to establish for this movie? No clue. That's such a good question. Yeah, because there's like a sci-fi element and a horror element at the beginning here, and neither of those are going to turn out to be the genre. <laughs> well, and then they try to like kind of squeeze in a little romantic comedy type deal, and that didn't go anywhere. Yep. Yeah. Also, did you notice all of the names on this movie, like all of the names of the actors sound like they're Almost celebrities you've heard of, but not quite. Yes. Yes. Like Kate Damon. Matt Damon? No. <laughs> Kate Blanchett? No. Kate Damon. Yeah, right. No, Frank like the- S. Aronson. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw him in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. No, it was like, you remember that, you know, that meme about the, the Japanese baseball game with the American team names mm-hmm. or whatever? It's kinda, it was kind of <laughs> like that. So the credits. <laughs> Credits by the the off-brand soda you bought at the Russian grocery store yeah. around the corner from you. Exactly, exactly. Jorhan yeah. hot dog bun at first. <laughs> Joka Jola, that's yeah, not what? a soda I want. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is where we're going to meet our main character, Stephen. So MIT has created a super brain that's mm-hmm. uh, like a computer, but better I guess. <laughs> From what I can tell, they just invented Google. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, because literally they're like, this computer can see everything on the internet at the same time. It's like, yeah, that's what Google does. That's right. why when you search for a thing, it finds it very quickly. <laughs> look look, look at how many the, the results you return in such a very, very short time. Yeah. So, right, right. The thing is, is that this entire movie is built around they've had this huge breakthrough in computing but the people involved with this movie don't know what that would mean Mm -mm. no they think that like the peak of computing will be when a computer is a guy (laughs) yeah right yeah exactly well they keep talking about how any minute now computers will be smarter than people i'm like are you fucking kidding me too (laughs) didn't that happen like in the 70s yeah (laughs) exactly where the fuck have you been (laughs) the minute dave could feed punch cards into that room size computer (laughs) faster than i could do math in my head they beat us they won (laughs) so all right, but so our main character, Steven, is calling all the people back at MIT going like, man, I thought I was going to get the push the button on the <laughs> supercomputer. You guys started the supercomputer oh, without damn. me? Go off. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Does this guy look to you like they wanted to get J.K. Simmons or Hugh Lowry and could get neither, so they just like <gasps> made a mashup monster? Okay. Yes. All right. And actually, ooh, unpopular opinion, I don't think he was that bad considering the script he was given. He did some acting work, I guess. Like... There were a lot of things that were very, very bad about this movie. His acting was not good, but I don't think it was very, very bad. And that's an improvement on the overall movie. Yeah. Right. No, he actually really did stand out from the rest of this film to the point where you felt sorry for him. Oh, right? for sure. All the other actors are terrible. The script is ridiculous. The room hiss has more lines than him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was actually a decent, like, you know, he's not a, like, you know, he, he can't carry a fucking movie with his charm or anything. But no. he was a decent actor compared to what else was going on here. Mm mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I have him down in my notes as Anthony Boring Dane. So okay. Oh, <laughs> well done. Mine didn't have a pun in it. That's yeah. Too bad. Try harder. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking rude. I've been here for ten minutes. So. All right. So so Stephen is going. So he's apparently at some conference about computer stuff. They don't know any better than that. So he goes into the, he's at this conference. He goes into the next talk. There's a lady who's like getting ready for her talk. And of course, everybody's still talking about the big MIT breakthrough that they can't really be specific about. Mm. And so the speaker, the woman who's about to give the talk turns to this guy. Everybody's like, oh, you were worked on that computer. He's like, yeah, I sure did. And she's like, is it true that uh, your computer can read all of the books in the world and understand every little nuance in just a fraction of a second? Like, what would every that every little fu- nuance? What? What? <laughs> what, could that, what could that possibly? 
I don't don't know. Oh, you must read The Great Gatsby, the way that people are dressed. It's a symbol. (laughs) She's wearing the blue dress when she gets hit by the car. (laughs) Snub nose motorboat. (laughs) Well, and, and, and so the lady playing the, the speaker here, I'm left wondering whether stare into both the past and future simultaneously was a stage direction. She's <laughs> terrifying. She really, like, at first I thought she just has like very big, prominent eyes. But for some reason, it was just this scene. She looked like she was seeing a ghost the whole time. Yeah. She, you know, she looks like it's the person who Gwyneth Paltrow sucks the youth out of. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. So they took her down from the attic or something. They were hanging yeah. there most of the time and they let her make a movie once or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so, and then she asks, she turns to the guy, she's like, so this big computer, could it answer uh, life, the universe and everything for us if we asked? Yeah, yeah. the hitchhiker's guideness of this all was <laughs> puzzling. <laughs> oh, because whereas Douglas Adams had a funny grasp on philosophy and came back with a purposefully vague... So the, in, in in Hitchhiker's Guide, people go to this... It's a, the exact same premise. Mm-hmm. They go to this computer and say, what's the answer to life, the universe, and everything? And you wait five million years or however long it is, and the answer was 42. Spoiler. And then they the question, yeah. which is... I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> which is a funny bit for a sci-fi satire... It does not a movie make. No, mm-hmm. no, not a compelling no. drama. And, well, and no. let's keep in mind that all kind of other shit also happened in Hitchhiker's Sky, right? Like that wasn't the <laughs> only, it wasn't just that over and over and over right. again for 90 goddamn minutes. <laughs> Like, if the Hitchhiker's Guide movie was, instead of all of the adventuring that happened, just over and over again, all of those, like, people gathering at the computer, and the computer says 42, and then they fuck off for a couple hundred years and come (laughs) back and, like, how about now? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, still 42 for sure. And then we watch that eight more times. That would be this movie. Right. That is this movie. It's worse than Vogon poetry. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But... This entire scene is redeemed because they introduced the concept of the movie. Could your supercomputer tell us whether or not God exists? And for some miraculous reason, they have put a heckler yes. in the scene. <laughs> Third row Batgirl, my hero, my soulmate, <laughs> my one and my only, who spends this entire scene being like, that's a fucking stupid question. I can tell you, no, there's no God. She does say you're not going to find religion in a computer, which like, yeah. Yeah, no, you're yeah you it. nailed it. You <laughs> got it in one end of scene. <laughs> right. End of movie, actually. Yeah, I have no notes. <laughs> At one point, she mocks the conceit of this movie so thoroughly that the main character has to turn around and go, no, no, that is the plot of this movie. Yeah. I assure you. Please, <laughs> right. please stop objecting. <laughs> also, so if you had access to a supercomputer that could tell you all the secrets of the universe, I feel like whether or not there's a God is probably a question that is up there. But I feel like, is there life after death is a more compelling question and also one that's like slightly more answerable. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just do not think that whether or not God exists is the first thing that MIT professors are going right, to look yeah. into. I don't know that it would make my top 25. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I would be on like, did that girl really look at me from across the bar before I got to this God exists? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sorry. Now that Libby Van Loke only really wanted to be friends, is there an omnipotent demon that watches all the baby cancer? Yeah, right. No? So, okay. Stupid. I figured. I figured. It was, Square is the one with the four sides, right? Okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> so, so, and now we overhear some the news again. Jeez, these cheap bastards couldn't even afford to make the fake news footage. We just hear the news from off to the side now. It's so bad. <laughs> They're so, and also, this is like the third time that this movie has been like, the news is filling you in on another plot point. Fuck you, we're 15 <laughs> minutes into this thing. But we do overhear, in addition to getting a lot of our plot from news, we also overhear a lot of people talking in like vague terms about this. Because they yeah. <laughs> woman just did this exposition dump in like 22 seconds of like here's what's going on they're being shut down because racism i guess i don't know sounds okay to me actually <laughs> yeah right so the the super mit computer has been shut down because it was 
taking down websites, mostly terrorist sites and racist sites. And I'm like, so the mm -hmm. religious ones, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah, the computer is cancel culture. <laughs> <laughs> the Venn diagram is a complete circle. Yeah. So, so the next morning, we watched the news some more. The, another goddamn <laughs> news exposition dump <sighs> where they tell us that the FBI is now closing down all the supercomputer brain things everywhere. So as I, t I don't remember if I said it on the show yet, but I did watch this movie twice because the first time I was so baffled by it that I did not think I could come on this show and say anything about it because <laughs> nothing happened in the movie. So I was like, I'm sure I missed something. I'm sure I just had one too many glasses of wine. Classic Jessica. No, no, no. But the second time around, I did go ahead and transcribe almost all the text I saw on screen. Oh, good, because <laughs> usually Heath does that. So you're actually yeah, filling in go. well. Oh, good. Perfect. Would you mind? Would it be okay if oh, I just like, please do. did a little oh, read please. through yeah. of it? Okay, so we're looking at a very generic news screen and it's got a woman talking and then sometimes a congressman who is weirdly is he British or does I, he just have like a he doing a speech? British fucking accent he's a US congressman he's yes. like foghorn leghorn <laughs> trying to sneak through British customs with a fake passport <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so so we have this Chiron and it's not a running Chiron it's just like blurps random things out. Right, they couldn't figure out how to do the scroll, yep. <laughs> and I could not believe these weird, like, stories they were telling us about with no... Okay, I'm just going to read them and we'll just discuss. Okay. <laughs> Markets down before open. Financials up pre-market. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> New England lobster catch highest in a decade. Well, because this is Massachusetts. They figure that's what they're probably talking about. That's going to be top. Yeah, sure. The <laughs> Three tornadoes touch down outside Oklahoma City. Well, they just touched pretty, down. Yeah, it's pretty regular. <laughs> Indiana man finds dinosaur fossil on farmland. Well, that disproves evolution. Okay. <laughs> At best, that's a human interest story. That is not Chiron worthy. No. Like if I'm <laughs> if I'm watching MSNBC and something ticks by a man finds dinosaur fossil, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this might be my favorite one because it's Police vehicle chase in Chicago leads to death of two car thieves. Now, first of all, as a copywriter, that sentence is eight words too long. Right? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Also, <laughs> also, I just like police vehicle chase as if that's a term everyone uses. And like the deaths of two car thieves. That's called editorializing. You have yeah, to say, right. like, <laughs> say suspects at the best. At or least. just say like. Two dead after Chicago police chase. Fucking right. done. Well, exactly, exactly. At least the death of two <laughs> is fine. But two car thieves is a really judgmental saying. I don't think they can do that. And then this is a very good one also because it it sort of is the one that kind of skews the rest of them because Anderson pulls out of U.S. tennis open citing leg in injury. This is not ESPN. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't think somebody dropping out of the U.S. Open is necessarily like Chiron worthy, right? <laughs> well, we will learn later on that in this universe they put like crank calls into the news. So oh, yes, they do. You know, they <laughs> need better producers. <laughs> <laughs> they need better everything. <laughs> and then we have to we have to introduce his. Um, I don't know, his, his weird butler. Alexa thing. Yeah, so he's just like, hey, my butler, uh, computer butler, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? <laughs> and I like that he has a little, like, cartoon butler. Like, he has a clippy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we have to personify this thing right. because it's for toddlers. Well, what's amazing about this movie is that someone obviously was like a diehard fan of Ask Jeeves, and they were like, <laughs> you'll see in the future, Ask Jeeves is going to be everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I would honestly watch a documentary about how, like, the dark internet took down Ask Jeeves because he knew too much. <laughs> <laughs> See? Already making better movies. <laughs> All right, so so now we're going to cut to Amherst, which is where this guy works, because just in case anybody was in danger of knowing what the hell was going on, the plot is that he programmed a computer at MIT while working at UMass Amherst, which they will alternately call Amherst or UMass just whenever, you know. Or MIT, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, but he's there. He's clocking in on his supercomputer, which is not the supercomputer this movie's about. Keep up. This is a different <laughs> super-duper computer. You can see 
the stupidity of the writers in action as they're introducing this scene. It's like, oh, right, but they shut that one down. So he's got a different supercomputer <laughs> that's just as super at his office. So, yeah, and so he's sitting down at his new, at his uh, little supercomputer. I love there's this moment where they have to, like, I guess the writers felt that they needed to show us that his supercomputer was supercomputing. Mm -hmm. So he asks for a status report, but the computer's like, I'm just, I'm fucking computing, man. I'm, I'm computing the fuck out of this shit. <laughs> yeah. <I'm a> <laughs> what the fuck do you want me to say? It cannot be overstated how many human beings you could fool into thinking something is a supercomputer <laughs> with a half decent chat bot. Apparently, right? yeah. It was just like, hello, Dave. Oh my God, that thing's got a fucking soul. All right, <laughs> I'm out. Also, he walks into this little office and this guy immediately is like, oh, you got a package, which is, I've never seen a package that was more obviously a bomb. Right. And then he put, he's like, okay, thanks. Puts it down. End of like we never see that package again. Nope. Like for being less than ninety minutes, this movie has so much fluff in it. Yeah, there is five minutes of shit happening across the ninety minutes. I I had to go back to this and just stare at this for so long to figure it out. Why the fuck was this package here? I eventually figured out. You know what this package is? This big giant fluffy package. Yes. That's the program. It's the program. For the computer. <gasps> no. Yes. Instead of emailing it to him, he sent him, I don't know, the printout of the <laughs> computer program. It is a CD-ROM. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you get 40 free hours out of this. I don't know if you know. Those are value. <laughs> I know there's a deleted scene somewhere of him trying to plug that package into a USB port. And I... <laughs> That's footage. He's just flipping it over and then flipping it back and flipping it <laughs> I over. I bet he just put the whole package in like a standard Xerox scanner yeah. and just scanned that and was like, I did it. Right. I supercomputed. Yeah, exactly. It's so fucking stupid. Like, so great is the misunderstanding of technology in this movie that they could have done anything at this point. I'd be like, yeah, okay. In the near future, I guess that's how a computer works. Cool. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, right. The computer's regressed over the last seven years. Yeah. <laughs> So and, and then so his buddy Alan, who was with him at the conference at the beginning, shows up. Now, Alan will just be here to deliver blatant conversational prompts. Boy, right. Boy, oh boy. Alan is a mess of a character. He has no, like they hint at so many things about his character, none of which come into fruition. Like no, nobody none. takes a character arc in this at all. But this guy, like somehow gets less three-dimensional as the movie goes on. It's it's so weird because they keep adding things to his personality as though that's like, well, now he has another characteristic, therefore he's a fully fleshed out character. He has a mm -hmm. wife and kids <laughs> and a shed. If you replaced every <laughs> shot in this movie of Alan with a speak and spell, it would make zero <laughs> difference. Mm -hmm. I would like that better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The cow does go moo, Alan. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, yeah, so he sits down in the office with him. And he's like, so, uh, you know, they have a little bit of conversation. He's like, so anyway, getting back to the plot. I'm like, God damn it. Oh, buddy, you guys did not earn being self-referential. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking writing in this movie is so clunky. I felt like the actors needed to wear steel-toed boots. Ooh, <laughs> take that movie. Right? <laughs> he goes, man, it's a shame they shut down that computer. We were going to find out whether there's a God. And he's like, you know, I just so happen to have the code for the super God answering computer brain right here in my package. Okay. So what he is saying is he already has a computer as powerful as the MIT computer. And he also has the code for the computer so what the fuck are we doing here? Like, right? <laughs> why did that matter if it was easily like we can replicate this easily? So why did it matter that the FBI shut down the MIT one? Like this just nullifies everything that's happened thus far in the movie. Yes. Yeah. As as weak as the stakes were thus far, we've just eliminated them. Yep. No stakes. There's zero stakes. Yeah. And we've revealed that the people who made this movie think that when supercomputing comes to fruition, you're going to need to send your buddy a copy like it's missed too if he wants a <laughs> supercomputer. Honestly, when I, I used to live in Montana before there was like Netflix. And so we had one DVD copy of Prison Break that we 
passed around the staff and everybody was watching Prison Break. And I would rather watch a movie about my friends watching Prison Break than I would this movie. Oh, so much better. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, okay, then we get the dumbest and most useless scene in a movie where that is a damn competitive category. <laughs> we get the scene where the Treasury Department lady shows up for his biannual exposition review. <laughs> oh, my cry. And she's like a temp. Yeah, right, yes. right. She even walks in going like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> it's amazing. The thing I love is when she comes in, she has to scan her fingerprint for security reasons. And so she like buzzes him and he said, like, do you have to scan your fingerprint? And she's like, it's not working. He's like, cool, come in. I have no questions. Yeah, right. <laughs> None. Nailing this security shit, aren't you? <laughs> And this this scene only serves to highlight that they don't know how supercomputers or the treasury works. She's like, right. well, I'm here to check and see that this computer's doing good, but I don't know anything because they couldn't write any questions about the treasury. So how's it going? Good? So they just... <laughs> They just sent this woman in blind and be like, hey, inter like I've had jobs where you have to interview people and you'll get like a little biography and an idea of what the piece you're going to write is. So you ask them questions that are relevant to whatever you're doing. There you go. You don't just walk in and be like, hey, I'm Jess. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think people would read? Do you, uh, do you watch WandaVision? <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> I had the weirdest dream last night. Let's talk about it. <laughs> So, okay, and the dumbest fucking thing about this is they don't set anything up about this in this scene that's going to come back later or anything. What they do instead is tell us what their supercomputer does. And because the fucking writers are so stupid, they can't think of anything that a supercomputer might do. Mm -mm. What their supercomputer does is it scours the Internet for every economic forecast of any kind, including like some dude on Facebook going, economy's going to hell. Right. We find out later that's included. <gasps> it catalogs all of those to check and see if they're correct, because that's the only thing they could think of that you might do with a supercomputer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this will not matter ever, by the never. way. Never. It will never matter. Yeah. I really you can leave the first half of this movie and the last half of this movie in the trash. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Like, literally. So from the time he says, you know, I have a computer downstairs that we could fight, figure this out. You could skip from there to the last three minutes of this movie and you would miss nothing. No, nothing. no thing. Yeah. yeah. But don't worry, we'll put puns in there or something so it'll be worth listening to. <laughs> to so, okay. So, so now he's calling David Kaplan. Remember David Kaplan? Fuck you. You need to be on this shit. <laughs> we met him for one second at the beginning of the movie, damn it. He's the guy who was running the computer at MIT that got shut down. So now Steven's calling him going, hey, man, what's up with the, you know, with the plot? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's like, never contact me again. They're shocking my balls. So this computer tells them if God exists. <laughs> he says, don't tell, don't email me either. I'm telling that to everyone. You've heard what's going on here. Like, sir, if that's the case, do not answer your phone. Right. You have to take some responsibility for Just this. <laughs> shut it the fuck down. Just turn to take the battery out. Yeah. Right. So, and, and, but then he's got to tell him, like, he's got to be like, hey, man, you know, you've got the program, but he doesn't want to say it because his phone's being tapped. So he like, does the whole, like, I got that shirt. You what? Remember that <laughs> ogram pray that I and say ooh yay? You know. <laughs> I just really wanted it to flash cut over to the FBI who has tapped his phone, and they're just like, "No idea, sir. No <laughs> idea." He fooled us again. <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> Where's Alan Turing? Where's Alan Turing? <laughs> All right, so now we get him and Alan. They have to plot on how. To God, why is this so convoluted? They have to plot on how to get two extra servers to hook up to their supercomputer so they can run the God-finding software on it. So this is when this movie takes a turn from, okay, it's something about supercomputing to all of a sudden it's an emergency that they have to have this God question answered. Yeah. And, and they're willing to risk their careers. They're willing to break the law to do it. And I like, they act like there is a ticking time bomb about this question, but the stakes simply couldn't be lower. No, no. It, uh, yeah. All of a sudden this becomes a goddamn heist flick where they're mm -hmm. trying to steal the knowledge of God or something. 
but I mean, it's a heist is in so much that they like do the sneaky cartoon walk into the building at <laughs> right, night. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> That's where the heistiness ends. Yeah. yeah. But, but his point here is that he can go buy these two illicit supercomputers for thirty nine thousand one hundred dollars. Real weird that they would, which put is such a specific number. Yeah, huh? it would be thirty. It would be thirty eight thousand nine hundred ninety. Give me a fucking of break. Of course, or thirty nine ninety nine. Like, uh, garbage. But then we they introduce this weird ass component that apparently these supercomputers that he has a sales paper for are illegal. They have to go pick them up from the supercomputer dealer over on the corner, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And yet they advertise, huh? Yes. Yeah. I really want to watch that sale happen. <laughs> hey, there he is. Dude, it is good to see oh, you. Hey, Josh, we're, we're hugging now. Yeah, hugging. get in here. <laughs> of course we are, okay. buddy. Come uh, on in, man. Yeah, no, I, I uh, sure. I, I would love to. I just, um, I would like to pick up the thing, uh, and then I could go. Yeah, yeah, no problem, man. Just come on in. I'll pack it up for you. Okay, all right. Pack. Nice. I love all these uh, blacklight posters. Right. Have. Yeah, I got them from this place in the mall. It's called Spencer's Gifts. No, uh, no, I've heard of it. Yeah. Hey, Crandula, say hi. Hi. Oh, is this uh, your da daughter? <laughs> nah, man, that's my lady. Give me one second. I'm oh. going to go grab stuff for you. So, uh, what, what grade are you in? I mean, technically I should be a junior, but I dropped out because high school's fucking bullshit. Yeah. No, right. High school is um, hard. What? Nothing. Nothing. Here we go. Two supercomputers. Thanks. Thanks, man. Uh, well, this is this is for you. Thank you. And I'll I guess I'll see you around. Oh, uh, what? You're not going to boot them up? Here at your place. I... Yeah, man. Boot well, them up. No, I kind of I, I bought these to use at over at my house. Oh, uh, OK. I just I thought we were friends. We could like boot them up, do some supercomputer stuff but no man i mean if you gotta oh, run no, I, I, I we're we're friends of course you, you know what let me let me yeah actually let me boot it up right i got a few minutes i'll i'll just do it right here in the room with um a angela it's crangela oh, cr uh, crangela right let's use it to buy some squishmallows on ebay nice i gotta move to a supercomputer legal state what i said awesome squishmallows <laughs> Right. So, OK. So but he's apparently he's being watched by the FBI, right? Because they know he'd be after the illicit computers. So he needs his buddy, Alan, to buy them for him. Mm -hmm. And then the two of them need to lock themselves into the supercomputer facility at Amherst overnight so they can find out if God exists once and for all. And just like that, it becomes a gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I wish. Uh, yeah, right. Also, oh. the, so in this, they do so much exposition dumping. And I don't remember their names. David maybe is one of them. One guy says to the other, like, hey, this is risky. Like, we're going up against the FBI. And the guy's like, risk. Risk is my middle name. And he also says... I'll take my chance, which isn't the expression. The expression is I'll take my chances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That bothered me more than it should have. <laughs> yeah. And they're standing so close to each other. Yeah. yeah. I thought their noses were good. I thought they were going to do a little Eskimo kiss. And then I would have liked this movie more. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, they tease us with a lot of gay porn. Mm -hmm. And then Jane shows up to see him. That's the speaker lady from before. Keep up. But I just I have to point this out. When this scene starts, when you know, somebody has to walk in on him and say, hey, Jane's here to see you. He's got to be doing something computery. So they have him on the phone just listing computer languages. <laughs> okay. just, he's just listing programming languages for no goddamn reason. But they're not like they're in. They're obviously when they Googled programming oh, languages, yeah, yeah. the first three they found alphabetically. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, you're going to learn Python is one <laughs> one of them <laughs> for the computing uh, HTML you know is what I would say <laughs> maybe you've heard of it it's on the internet yes. <laughs> so but he leaves that and he comes down to see Jane and apparently they have a romantic relationship now based on their brief interaction I don't we've not seen anything else happen but they're acting like they're dating now 
Well, and also she's like, oh, I wanted to see if you answered the question. Like, ma'am, I think if they'd figured out if God was real or not, you would have heard that on the news. I do not think you have to go to him in person. (laughs) Yeah, so so they're acting like they're they're dating, but also like they've just met for the first time, right? Because this is where they have the the conversation of whether or not they're religious and whether or not they're married. (laughs) Yep. This is just like a, a small talk thing. There's this great moment where he goes... Yeah, my wife died. I'm I'm not real good at talking about it. And I wrote in my notes, it would be weird if you were really good at talking about it. Right? <laughs> we don't want you Ask to be... me questions about it. No, I'll nail them. I'll nail them. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get in one, too. I, I need actually, to think about it. I have <laughs> I have flashcards here. So, <laughs> right, right. Well, because this morphs into the two of them going on a lunch date mm-hmm. because it turns out there actually was a plot thread less interesting than the main one. <laughs> also, these two have so little chemistry. I have oh. never seen anything like it. Oh, it's painful. Yeah, so they, they go out to eat. She explains that she was all set to inherit her father's chocolate empire when suddenly she decided she wanted to be a philosopher instead. With a gun to my head, I could write a better, more believable backstory. Oh, And also, why does it matter? Like, this right, woman never. is of no consequence. Nope. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a horrible misogynist. It's because <laughs> her character has no depth. Never, right, ever and, will matter. And she doesn't do anything. She doesn't show up to provide anything at any point except beans. She shows up with beans later. Anyway. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So much of my notes for this movie are wasted because I'm like, this is where the chocolate's going to come in. The chocolate will <laughs> never come in. Nope. I was so sure she was going to jam a Hershey bar into a CD port and save the world at some point in this movie. Uh, how do you think she learned how to cook beans over a Bunsen burner? It's from the chocolate. It's an old chocolatier's trick. It must, oh. it must be. Yeah. So, yeah. So they're giving each other's backstories. Like her husband died of cancer. His wife died in a car accident. I'm like, wow, we have a cancer atheist and a car accident atheist. That's pretty sweet. That's yeah. That's no, I have a question for the two of you. Mm hmm. If a woman is single and in her, say, past 30, yeah. and she is presented as the love interest, how often would you say she's widowed as opposed to divorced or 100% just single? 100% of the time. Okay. 120. Sometimes they get two dead husbands. <laughs> okay. That was my, hi- that was my hypothesis, yep. is that the worst thing they can imagine is either a woman who's just straight up single in her 30s, like, can you imagine, or a woman who got a divorce, even though our protagonist got a divorce. <laughs> right, right. No, so so the only time, this is amazing, I but, but the only time they'll ever have gotten a divorce is if their husband is in jail, right? That's the one time that that's excusable in Christian movie universe. Mm-hmm. But weirdly, when he talks about his own divorce, it actually felt like a very good, honest, like, description of why people get divorced sometimes, of like, there were two people who liked each other and were like stoked to get married and then they realized they weren't a good match. So they got divorced like fucking tale as old as time. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's so out of place in this movie because it actually makes sense. And also has nothing to do with any fucking thing. And Anything again, ever. never comes up again. Yeah. Ever. He also, of course, does the like God killed my wife. So I stopped believing in him thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. And I know we've heard this argument like eight million times across so many movies, but mm-hmm. it just occurred to me when I was watching it for the first time why this keeps coming up in Christian movies. It's because Christians can't help but admit the second their relative privilege ended, they wouldn't believe in God anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not that like millions and millions of people have their children starve to death in front of them. Mm-hmm. They personally would have to have a car crash happen to them before they stopped believing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, good job, Eli. Deep shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's true. It's at, that's absolutely a correct assessment of things of like, yeah, bad things happen to other people, but as soon as bad things happen to me, wait a second. Hold on. God, there is yeah. no good. We had an agreement. You made me straight, white, and male. I thought nothing bad was going to happen to me. <laughs> Come on You now. promised. You promised. So also, so Eli, while you were having those deep thoughts, I was thinking to myself, is the woman playing Jane a French lady who's pronouncing English phonetically here? Her <laughs> emphasis is so often we're insanity. Girl. 
the last line she says, she says, I would have ended up stopping for fast food on the interstate. And she says it like an alien. Right. <laughs> yes. It's fast food and interstate. Yeah. Wait, why? Why though? <laughs> the only way this woman's performance makes sense is if she turns out to have been the supercomputer all along. <laughs> no, see, that would have made this movie vaguely interesting. And what would we have done with that? <laughs> One more thing. When she was like, oh, because he first of all describes himself as widowed divorce, as if that's a slang word that we all use all the time. Yeah, I'm widorced. You know, widorced. <laughs> but also he, she's like, oh, what happened to your wife? And he's like, I remember the smell of the pavement that morning. <laughs> it's like, Sir, you don't need to like write a poem about your experience. You can just say car accident. Yeah, could you tell me about it with a, I don't know, some melodic piano in the background? <laughs> that was the only way I knew I was supposed to be feeling an emotion. It's because right, the music yeah. was like, hey, dummy, <laughs> this is supposed to be sad, probably. Oh, is this a sad spousal death? I got you. I get it now. Classic. Jesus. Okay, and, and then we, so then we get this scene where Steve and Alan are sneaking into the lab, the computer lab, like goddamn Scooby and Shaggy. <laughs> okay, where's the thing? They work there. Right, At yes, least one of yes. them works there. Yeah. And they're, they're ninja. They might as well be like, dun, 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 dun. There's, there is nothing more suspicious than the way that they walk into this oh, building. Oh, they're sneaking under lasers that aren't there a la Catherine Zeta-Jones and shit. Oh, my shit. God. <laughs> also, why did we have to watch this scene? We had ne know. They at no point established like, oh, there's a special lock that they have to get into. So we have to see them overcome that obstacle. There are no obstacles. No, nope. they just walk in. They just walk into the building humming the Mission Impossible <laughs> theme to themselves so that we know they're in the building where they are later. Exactly. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This was the last moment in the movie where I thought a plot might show up. Mm. So, oh, you sweet summer child. Yeah, right. Let's linger on that blissful ignorance for just a minute, but we'll back in a flash with even more of the God question. Stop wiggling. Well, you're making me nervous. Uh, hey guys, what are you doing? Oh, hey Jessica, Noah's about to drill a hole in my head. Why? Oh, uh, Eli has a mental illness? You do? Yeah, mm -hmm. no choice but to drill a hole in my head and hope all the sad, oppressive thoughts come dribbling out. I mean, why don't you just try BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. Why would anybody go to the internet for a therapist? Yeah. Well, BetterHelp has a broad range of expertise available, which might not be locally available in many areas. So if you need a therapist who's secular, queer affirming, sex work positive, BetterHelp can help you find someone. But what if Eli doesn't like who they match him up with? Yeah, what if they try to drill a hole in my head? Right. Well, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. Wait, so no awkward therapist breakups? No awkward therapist breakups. I don't know, Jessica. It sounds good, but isn't that pricey? I mean, we already bought this drill. Mm -hmm. Well, BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Wow, that sounds great. How do we sign up? Just visit BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's better, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. Thanks, Jessica. All right, Noah, get drilling. No, uh, wait, I thought you were going to use BetterHelp. Oh, I am, but we wanted a birdhouse, so. Yeah. Okay. Doctor. We've done it. The ultimate podcasting computer. That's right. Capable of over one million puns a second. The world's fastest hyper-electronic and totally hearable computer. I call it the Heath. Heath, can you hear us? I would like you to record a podcast with us. Heath, can you hear us? Uh, Heath? Uh, don't do this, Heath. I don't understand. It seems to be working, but it's not responding. Yeah, maybe the input is broken? No, um, the input is working fine. It's just not responding. I don't get it. How can it just not respond? Oh, okay, here's a message. Uh, here we go. We'll let you know next week. Um, Doctor, you, you need to see this. My, my, my God, somehow without texting us back at all, it's recording hundreds of podcasts a second. 
It's not possible. Uh, uh, complete with sketches, intros, 60 second on the clock bits. To, uh, why, there's enough here for 100 years. We have to shut it down. Uh, there will be much? too much podcast to listen to. I know how to shut it down. You do? Yes. Computer, I love you. Oh, that did it. Yeah, wow. That fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. When we last left off, nothing in particular was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to rejoin the inaction with Stephen Allen all the way snuck into the computer lab now. <laughs> and he's going to click install. Oh, boy. We are going to watch software install in the goddamn movie. But wait, it means that the people who made the movie thought that when we created a supercomputer, there would be a loading screen. You know, <laughs> like when you download yeah. Flash. They got quite a snazzy loading screen. <laughs> I don't know why it made me laugh when he said, this is like an encyclopedia times a thousand. <laughs> and it's just, it's such a nothing statement, right. but he says it so emphatically. Yes. Yeah, well, he sits down to like kind of explain to Alan what a computer program is. He gets it wrong, by the way. Mm. <laughs> so. Immediately. Oh, this is also, this is where we learn that Alan is an evolutionary biologist, which... Of fucking course he is. <laughs> I hadn't given up on this movie quite to the degree that I should have, so I assumed that that was going to mean, like, later it would matter or something. I'm so sorry. It will not. No, nothing will <laughs> ever matter. So he says, computer, we have a question for you. The computer's like, you're going to ask me if, uh, if there's a god, aren't you? This <laughs> sassy computer <laughs> just out the gate, it's giving him lip. <laughs> so so the, they're like, yeah, man, how'd you know? He's like, yeah, this is a dumb fucking Christian movie. I'm a supercomputer. How could I not know? <laughs> and and, he, and they're like, all right, so so tell us we have until six o'clock on, on Monday morning. Tell us if there's a God. He's like, all right. And they're like, Oh, also, could you give us hourly updates? Because otherwise, this movie is literally just a processing bar that doesn't move very fast. Um, so. <laughs> we would like to find a way for our movie to have a convention of, are we there yet? Can you put in, are we there yet? Can and hey, to the supercomputer's credit, it's like, no. no. Yes. <laughs> also, this is when we start like using the microphone as a visual marker for the supercomputer. Yeah, why? Which makes no sense because we have a computer screen to look at. Right. And I, if I see a man talking to a monitor, I can make the cognitive leap that there's a microphone somewhere picking him up. Right. It, it, well, and the microphone, like the speaker would represent the computer. If anything, what, why the microphone yeah. is an input to push it makes no goddamn sense. Nothing. I, I also love how they're being coy with the computer, right? Like they're trying to fool it like you would with a seven year old. Right. They're like, now, when you're on the Internet, you're going to read a thing about how what we're doing is illegal. Ignore that stuff. OK, <laughs> I've talked to my guy and he does it well, like. Full on winking at Alan. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so now they've got to wait around. And, and so Alan asks if Stephen is married because the screenwriter doesn't know what else humans would discuss. We already had this conversation with Jane. OK, to be fair, though, if they had a word for word repeat of the conversation with Jane and the diner, <laughs> fucking good would that have been, This is though. a brilliant comedy. I would have loved it. <laughs> and also, it's wild that the writer keeps landing on, have you been married? Are you married? When spouses play no role nope. in this, and then nor does it give you an indication of like who he is as a person. Nope. Like maybe if he had said, oh yeah, I was married, but I'm so invested in my work that I couldn't give her the attention she needed. So he ended up breaking up. Yeah. That would give us some character development. Right. Nope. But again, they think that fucking bio traits and character are the same thing. That, that, that's the writer mm -hmm. does not recognize any difference. For fuck's sake, at one point in this conversation, this is the actual question in the script. Alan says to Stephen, so how would you describe your feelings about what we're doing? What? <laughs> the f that's something you put in your outline to like place hold. Right. Yes. No, this is this is like the kind of shit that you would say if you were on stage and clearly the other guy just forgot his line. Right. Yep. So what were your feelings about the situation <laughs> that we're in right now? Oh, right. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> and also. 
also we have Alan all of a sudden telegraphing that he's going to do a heel turn. Like he kind of starts getting a little bit sinister on <laughs> yeah. us. And I was like, okay, all right, this guy. So I'm like thinking I had like, okay, so they're going to find the answer. And this guy is going to be like, no, the, the truth is too much and destroy everything. Like that's right. genuinely where I thought I was going. No, nothing. Yeah. Literally nothing. Right. Cause he's the evolutionary biologist and everything. I thought to say the, the computer would prove there was a God and he would shut it. But nope, nope. Because that would require there to be a goddamn plot. <laughs> and then he starts talking to him about like, you know, we're going to be immortal in science. Sir, what are you even doing here? You're like keeping him company. Right. You yeah, exactly. Less than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you just showed up. I'm going to be your sidekick. I'm going to be the Robin. In this. <laughs> Everyone wants to hear Robin's side of the story. <laughs> and this is where we reveal the crux of the movie because they. this is where they do their first check-in. They're like, Ivan, mm -hmm. are we there yet? And the computer's like, I will turn this computation around. <laughs> But it doesn't answer them. No. This computer has no respect for these men. No. This, they built a computer that doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Computers have one job and it's to compute shit and then also let me know what you can Right. Computed. Yeah. I got to have That's the it. output. <laughs> it's a real two sided coin there. Yeah. They invented my iPhone. Is what they <laughs> yeah. Invented. Right. Exactly. No, they invented like a sassy teenager. Yes. Right. So did you finish it? I don't know. I'll tell you, mom. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> So these two grown men roll out their sleeping bags. They're sleeping out there overnight, right? They've, they've, uh, and they've, this is when they start smooching. If, uh, if, I wish. I deeply wanted them to have bucket. like, I just wanted a, a lingering moment of them looking at each other like, have you ever done this before? And like, just nothing. <laughs> Yeah, Nothing. or at least, at least a cuddle. Now, what I love about it is the idea is that these two men have locked themselves into this room over the weekend. I'm like, where are they pissing? <laughs> right? Like, there's so many logistical issues. Well, and also, why do they need to be locked in the room? Why can't they just set the computer to run, right. come back <laughs> Sunday night, and be like, hey, computer, what's up? Well, the security <laughs> guard might walk by and be like, wait a second. This computer ain't doing financial comparisons <laughs> against every tweet <laughs> ever trying made. trying to figure out if there's a God. He's trying to figure <laughs> out if Jesus is our Lord and Savior. <laughs> and I'm still confused about why they needed to bring in their own like super computed machine. Oh, that was who never the cleared fuck up. Even knows, right? No idea. They they yeah. felt like there needed to be another confusing, stupid wrinkle in this fucking movie. I think they think if we if they just like move things around enough, we'll mistake it for a plot. <laughs> I think you're exactly right. Just just the same way as if they gave that guy a wife and two kids, he'd have a personality, right? In in that writer's mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus, every line of dialogue in this movie is like that annoying person who keeps talking when you want to take a nap. It's, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, I mean, it was very like kind of kids at a sleepover-ish of just like, are you married? I, I, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, do you think there's ghosts? Do you think, do you think Tony <laughs> do you think, Danza's nice? Do you think Jam loves me? <laughs> <laughs> I like her. I tried to hold her hand and then she grabbed it away as fast as she could. I think we're going somewhere. <laughs> she stood up. That stuff with Britney Spears is crazy, right? Her dad's <laughs> like a lawyer. I feel bad because I know I was part of that culture in the 90s that informed her she's being taken advantage of. And now I just have to like do some thinking about how I can do better in the future. You, you guys Honestly, seen this movie could have won oh. me back if it had gone all the way with bullshit small talk. Right? Like, <laughs> right, right. If they had played I Am thinking of a thing for 20 minutes in this movie, I'm back on board. A leather jacket is not a vegetable. What if they just like bust out Nintendo Switches and they're just sitting there playing like Animal Crossing for four hours and we have to watch it in real time? Like, oh, turnips are really expensive in this universe. Oh, oh you, have a, you have a fucking meteor shower. Bullshit. Nice. Give me your coat. So, all right. So, yeah. We do some more waiting. We, we cut to that morning. Alan's taking selfies of himself for the big book he's going to write about whether there's a God or not. Oh, uh, and this scene is super boring and doesn't matter. But they do take a photo with the first iPhone here. And that was a great throwback. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> and this was made in 2014. Yeah. So it's not as if they hadn't developed iPhone technology. Right. <laughs> 
I also love that the guy really struggled getting a selfie. He's like, really? oh, I cannot get this. Well, they, we, we hadn't figured it out in 2014. We didn't know how to do it yet. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we watched them wait for a considerable amount, long enough for me to write into my nose, Jesus Christ, they knew this would be a movie about waiting and they made it anyway. <laughs> and then and then suddenly the, the power goes out to just the computer and they lose all their progress. So nothing has happened in the movie again. And also our main character delivers the following line. Ivan, you promised us an update, which is maybe the wildest thing I've ever heard a human man say to a computer. Like, <laughs> in this, like, whiny tone, like, Mama, you promised ice cream. <laughs> you're mean. You're mean, supercomputer. I hate you. I Let always hated you. you. You're not my real dad. <laughs> but it actually, it is actually more stupid than it. Lo we lost power and lost all our progress. Yeah. He checks it and he goes, no. Ivan shut himself down and then deleted his programming. And I wrote in my notes, well, now we know he's an atheist. He killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, the, the computer stops working. So they're like, the power went out. But like, sir, look around. You're in a room full of computers. You would notice if the power right. went out. You're in a bunker. There's still light in here. Right. Obviously, there's electricity. Yeah, he like goes up into the ceiling. He's like, no, the cooling system's still working. I'm like, you can see the cooling system. That's enough. <laughs> Just turn around Jesus. and hear the beeps that are in your head that you can see. Yeah. But the key here, though, is the computer shut itself down. Their God finding plans have been thwarted. Did this give y'all vibes of Jurassic Park? Yes. Yes. When all of a sudden, like, what? The computer is shutting down. I can't do anything. So I was like, okay, all right. A thing is going to happen. I can't wait. Right, right. Like, the, like maybe the computer figured out there was no God, so it's going to become God. Or, no, nothing. Mm -mm, nothing. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. All right. So now it's next Monday. We have we watch Stephen angrily fire off an email in real time. Yes. Like, I'm surprised we didn't have to watch him like back up and correct his spelling. <laughs> but we did. He writes another email later yeah, well, that he starts yes. typing <laughs> and then delete, 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 type, 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 delete, 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 delete. Yeah, we'll get that later. I guess we're building up to that. Also, they're trying to do a covert plot to outsmart the FBI and he emails Alan, I reinstalled the treasury slipstreams after you left last night, which absolutely sounds like they fucked. Yeah. The old <laughs> Ivan, the dumb Ivan, is back running normally with no memory of the weekend, which is so... And then he says, but I found something online this morning. Come over tonight. Now the romance movie starts. Right, yes. right. And they keep teasing us with the gay porn and it keeps not happening. No, so, okay, what he found online that Alan has to come over that night to meet him about apparently is that a priest got a random phone call from a rabbi asking about God that turned out to be a prank call because that rabbi doesn't even exist. Right. And this is when I was back on board for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the conclusion he reaches yes. for no reason at all. No, nope. it's such a wild leap. <laughs> is that that phone call must have been from the supercomputer? Yep. I can't think of any other explanation. No. Why else would a rabbi call a priest? Yeah. Nobody ever calls <laughs> with dumb questions for religious figures. It yes. must be this. And. The implication here, which, by the way, is the conceit for the rest of the movie, is that a supercomputer, upon being asked the dumbest and most obvious question possible, would be like, <laughs> you know who I should ask? People not as smart as me. Humans. Right. right. Like, I, I love the idea that the fucking computer was like, hey, father, could you do some homework for me? I, I have so much porn to process. It's insane. <laughs> it's, it's everyone's a stepsister. Why? <laughs> Can we talk about the technical aspect of this movie? Because was it filmed completely? Was it? Did they use a shotgun mic for everything? Oh. Yeah. Because every time they switched angles... It, the soundscape was completely different. Yep. It was so jarring. Yep. The, the amount of hiss in the background would mm -hmm. change wildly from moment to moment. Yeah. And then the end of the scene is, well, I guess we'll try again next weekend, which is a cool movie that tells you that you're about to see the exact same scene <laughs> yes. again. Oh, and they're just <laughs> telling us. They are, they are daring us to continue watching this movie. They have 
an amazing moment of self-awareness at the end of this scene where him and Alan are talking and he's like, I mean, why would the computer not want to tell us if God exists? And he's like, well, what if Muslim God exists? And Alan's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that would Is fucking Is this when suck. he talks about what if like a Brazilian tribe got the closest? Is that yeah. this part? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> are they... They're just making arguments that atheists make of like, yeah, so so you guys get it. You understand the problem with the fact that everybody has their own individualized God. Like, right. So, you know, and you're just going to keep making this movie. That's fine with me. So what I love is that the movie almost realizes how pointless it is, right? Because they, they're like, yeah, I think that the computer knows whether there's a God, but he just doesn't want to tell us, which would make sense if the answer's no. Uh-huh. Right. Like at least in this movie's logic, that would make sense. But if the answer is yes, it doesn't make sense for him to not tell us. So then he's like, well, but, you know, what if it was the Muslim God? It's like, that's not what you asked. You asked him, God, God right? The question you asked is whether there's a God or not. Asking which God is correct is a different fucking question. So a yes or no answer is only problematic for you if the answer is no. Right. I wish this movie would have ended with. The computer being like, yeah, we figured it out. It's Zeus. They got it in Greek times. <laughs> I don't know why oh, you guys that shit was have true. fucked it up ever since. <laughs> they just start hitting it with an X. Stupid, <laughs> heathen, computer. <laughs> Disrespectful. Uh. <laughs> Burn it at the stake, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he goes, oh, well, what now? And he's like, well, exactly the same thing over and over again until the credits end. So now <laughs> he's um. we watch him program his fucking Google alerts into his goddamn super Siri. Oh, oh my God. God. This is the closest <laughs> the movie attempts at an opinion, right? He's like, hey, Butlertron 3000, do you think God exists? Like Butlertron 3000 is going to be like, oh, I've known that God exists the whole time, Dave. You're the first one to ask. <laughs> I do like that he says... He says, Butler, are you the new Butler now? Yeah, because like, he's up great. <laughs> that's just, could you, nobody took a second pass on that <laughs> sentence? <laughs> no one took a second pass on any sentence. Anything. In this movie. I love he asks Butler whether God exists, and Butler's like, well, according to Thomas Aquinas, I'm like, oh, fuck, Ugh. this is the Microsoft Edge of God discernment software. <laughs> what the fuck? And even our main <laughs> character is bored by this. Yeah. Yes, yes, even the movie's bored with it. He's like, well, Aquinas has five arguments, two arguments in, the movie just aggressively cuts away. <laughs> yeah, and look, I get it. Christians, I also wouldn't want to display our yeah. three weakest arguments when our first two are, where does stuff come from except for our guy? <laughs> yeah, so we, we violently cut to him teaching his class as though the movie just suddenly became aware of how dull everything we'd seen so far is. Okay, I'm sorry. Are you talking about the fucking greatest thing? Ever to happen in any movie we've ever watched? Yo, uh, this scene. So here's what happens. And please, <laughs> please correct me if this is not what happens. Because if this is a hallucination and I was broken by watching the Snyder Cut, I will be so much happier. Mm. His student asks, how will we know when a computer becomes self-aware? <laughs> and his answer is, you know how a mannequin in a store can look like a super hot chick that you want to fuck the shit out of? <laughs> But he tees it up with like, you know, when your fucking bitchy girlfriend wants to go right, shopping yes, and so you yes. have to sit down because you're a man and you don't like clothes. You know how when you go out, everybody conforms to traditional gender roles <laughs> and then you want to fuck a mannequin. <laughs> and the scary thing is he's like, you know, when you see a mannequin out of the corner of your eye and you're like, I definitely want to fuck it. And then you look at it a little bit longer and you realize it's made out of plastic. And every student in the classroom is like, mm, yep. mm, yeah, mm, oh, yeah, mm, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 so, yes, 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 yes. Honestly, this would be my favorite movie if it had just been like, no, Professor Chris. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite movie now. Also, he does a thing where he like talks about a helicopter and he like does a bit about it. Yeah. And then at the end, all the, his class claps for him. Yes, right. Like, yes. I don't think that's how lectures work. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so just in case you think we're kidding about the mannequin fucking, that's literally how it goes, right? So he does his little helicopter bit, and then one of his students is like, speaking of computers, can you expound on the plot? How will we know if Ivan is self-aware? And then he st he spends this all this time going like, ah, you know, sometimes it's like, you, you, it's, it's got an illusion of life likeness, like when you want to fuck a mannequin. That's well, actually... Also they had to 
they had to describe self-awareness for 35 oh, minutes. Oh, they did. Yes, yes. God, in the weirdest way. You know how when you're aware of yourself, you are self-aware of your own existence? Will the computer be like that? Oh, you mean self-aware? The phrase that... You mean thinking about its own thoughts? Sure. <laughs> self-awareness. Web- Webster's Dictionary defines self-aware as... Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> so we get that, and then we get Stephen calling... All of the people that the computer prank called. So the computer called the priest, but he also called a bunch of other people like a lady that survived a bunch of tornadoes and a guy who had a near death experience and a lady who found her dog. What? Yeah. San Diego. (laughs) Yes. At a certain point, the computer obviously ran out of God opinion people and was just like. Ah, I want to call that lady who found her dog. That was weird, right? Yeah, that was <laughs> I think he was using it's like that episode of The Simpsons where Homer has like the auto dialer and it's just calling people one at a time, one at a time, like, oh, give me money. But it's just like, hey, did you have something terrible happen in your life? Tell me about it. I'm listening. <laughs> so also, a little editorializing. At this point, the first time I watched the movie, when this scene happened, I literally just closed my computer and put it down because I simply couldn't anymore. I just <laughs> could not formulate any thoughts. And then I got right back into it the second time around because this woman <laughs> said, I think it's someone who lost two children of her own in some type of accident, which is such a big call to be like, if she was absolutely, if, if if this person actually lost two of her own children in some type of accident, that would be an amazing way that she was able to defy, like, learn about this woman based on no information. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but she was talking to a fucking computer. Yeah. Right. But the question that Stephen has and the conceit of this movie is. So did the lady you talked to say she believed in God? Yeah. Because the only thing he can think of is maybe the supercomputer, while it was prank calling humans <laughs> to test whether or not we were ready for the truth, would be like, I mean, there's totally a God. Oops, I mean, bleep bloop. Don't, don't tell anyone I told you. I'm a rabbi. Also, I liked that one of the guys he called is randomly from Liverpool for no specific reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, the beetle. Well, yeah, right, what was because, that? Because their friend Stanley wanted to do his British accent. They told Stanley. Oh, you to do know his. that was somebody who isn't like a Beatles cover band on the weekend. Yeah. He's like, listen, my Liverpool accent is perfection. And so, well, And then eventually, after like the fourth phone call, the screenplay realizes how boring it is to watch other people make phone calls. So he visits one of the callers, right? He goes to the, the gardener guy. God, I love this scene so much. I just, I want to talk about his example so badly because it's my favorite thing in the universe. So Gardner guy has had four near-death experiences. So you suck at dying. Yeah, is a dangerous (laughs) business. And he's like, yeah, you know, I talked to the supercomputer that was pretending to be a guy. And uh, I think most religious people are full of shit. Exact quote. If you flip a coin long enough, you're going to come up with four heads in a row. Mm, mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm. that's a one out of 16. Yeah, chance. no, it's going to happen a lot, actually. <laughs> it's going to happen a ton. But think about how little you have to know about coin flipping and statistics to put that as a line in your movie. No one involved in this movie was like, Four seems small. Four seems small, right, Greg? (laughs) The thing that I loved about this guy is they keep referencing back to his blog that he writes. Yeah. uh And so our main character is like, um, so, and he asks him a question and the guy's like, I thought you said you read my blog. You didn't read today's. And like, imagine, (laughs) imagine if like you guys came on my podcast and you asked me a question. I'm like, oh, I thought you said you listened to my show. (laughs) Well, you didn't listen to last week's show, obviously, because I addressed this. I do not repeat things. You fucking, you fucking liar. You fucking gall of this man. (laughs) Yeah, but also like, this whole fucking scene negates itself, right? Because he's like, but didn't that reporter that called you to ask about your near-death experiences, didn't that turn out to be a, a fake? And he's like, no, I was just thinking it was a guy in a different Springfield. I thought he meant Springfield, Massachusetts, turned out it was Springfield, Illinois. What did that mean? Why was that in the movie? Did, did, did the movie, because I thought maybe the movie was telling us that the prank calls had nothing to do with the computer and this guy was just chasing his fucking tail. Nope. See, but the problem is that would have been interesting. Right, right. Something would have had to fucking happen. Jesus Christ. All right. So 
sometime later, he's he's back home. He's getting the morning announcements from his super Alexa. This is so fucking stupid. <laughs> this is the part where it's like, uh, there's you know, it's going to be rainy in the afternoon. Also, there are two mice nesting in your basement. How the fuck would your computer know that? <laughs> also, this supercomputer needs to learn how to not bury the lead and maybe right. use the inverted yes. pyramid. Yes. yes. <laughs> because he buries the lead deep. <laughs> yeah, because his list is, I have updated the shopping with bananas and milk. There are mice in the basement. A human man broke into our house. The mice are loving each other very much. I'm sorry, Butler. Can you go real back to the man who broke into my home? A human man, you say? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I love you. Has to clarify. It's like, wait, 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 wait. Did the human man try to break into, the, or the male mouse? Because if it's the male mouse, I'm not really concerned. No, a human. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see why you're uh, telling oh. me now. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, but but he's like, yeah, somebody tried to break in. I have video of it. Now, what the guy was doing was knocking on his door. Yeah. Right, that's what we see video of. And then so Steven says to the computer, well, did you call the police? And he's like, for somebody knocking on your, why would I do that, man? I'm just. I mean, to be fair, that is the thing a white person would do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> were they barbecuing, though? Because it's no barbecuing. And <laughs> did you see his permit? Did he have a permit for knocking on your door? <laughs> And I know this part is supposed to feel menacing, but the stakes truly could not be lower. No. Because he can just, like, if he's thinking he's going to get in trouble, just stop doing the thing. Right. Yeah. It's not like you're trying to save somebody's life or, like, nope. find an answer to it. Like, nope. Just stop doing the thing and people will stop stalking you, I guess. Yeah. And it's not like you're getting information anyway. Yeah. And your computer is being sassy besides. Yeah. Like, take the L. <laughs> yeah. You're not, you're not succeeding at the thing you might get in trouble for, right? right? <laughs> Techno thrillers are like, my God, we've got the code that would unlock every bank in the world. This is like, my God, we do not have the code that would unlock every bank in the world. <laughs> this way of getting the code didn't work either. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so he goes to work and now the fucking FBI is there to see him he's he's being interrogated about his computer knowledge by the fbi oh boy i forgot about this guy if i'm being honest because it never matters it never right. comes back no this is this is the first and last we will ever hear from the fbi fbi is like hey you didn't create your own supercomputer using the one you got in the basement did you and he's like what? no no, and he's like, no. Like, no. I don't know. why would all i right. do that goodbye right. for the rest of the fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> there are parts of this movie that feel like sketches of like <laughs> right, this guy yeah. just wanted to write an FBI agent. So he just wrote a vignette <laughs> about an FBI agent. Mm -hmm. But like the writing wasn't good. The acting wasn't good. The filming wasn't good. And the plot was boring. So actually, what the fuck are we doing right? here? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So the FBI lets him know that, they're, you know, they're, they're maybe on to him, but probably not. And then we watch him fucking try and fail to compose an email to Jane Wonka. Oh, my God. Absolutely not. I will not watch someone draft and delete their email. Did you see what his greeting is? Yes. Imagine if y'all asked me to be on this and I emailed you back like, Eli, hi. You know how humans talk. <laughs> I was really hoping this supercomputer would pop up as Clippy and be like, yeah. don't be such a pussy. Ask her to dinner. <laughs> or, sir, maybe use a more traditional greeting, like just hi or just Jane. <laughs> and not both in that particular order. You got it exactly wrong. Hello today, Jane. <laughs> you are. The computer I comes am. up. It looks like you're trying to write. I Do you like me? Check this box. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then he doesn't send the email. So nope. what was that scene? Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. Fucking. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. This movie has absolutely leveled Freitag's Pyramid. So there is no sign of a distinct act in this one anywhere. Still, we're calling that the end of act two. So we can take a break and I will give act three the hard sell or what this movie has instead of that. <clears throat> is there a God? OK, now is there a God? Well, how about now? Find out the answers to literally nothing when we return to the stagnant conclusion of the God Question. Hi, welcome to Typical Wooly Massage Parlor. Can I help you today? Yeah, I'm dealing with some muscle tension. Oh, I see. Well, I highly recommend our hot crystal cupping massage. It is so good for your lymph nodes, and it's just $900 an hour. Wow, that is 
super expensive and also very obviously bullshit. Do you have something that can just help with my muscle tension? I mean, you could get a Theragun. What's a Theragun? The Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Wow, that seems like that feels better than the cold oil eyeball wrap. Mm, It does. Whether you want to treat muscle tension from working out or an injury or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. The OLED screen and design make you feel like you're holding something from the future. Just go to their site and check it out. And the Theragun app learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines. It's true. Theragun sent us a Theragun to try and it's easy to use and it feels amazing. I use it all the time. No, what are you doing here? Oh, I get my hair massaged here. You get your hair massage? Yep. Four times a week. It's true, he does. Try Theragun for 30 days, starting at just $199. Go to theragun.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's theragun.com slash awful. Theragun.com slash awful. All right. Hey, uh, any chance I could get one of those hair massages? I'm sorry. Those are just for Noah. Yeah, sorry. Aw, beans. At last, a supercomputer capable of answering life's biggest questions. Computer, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Computer, can we ask you a question? Yes. Computer, in all your knowledge, when you review all the books in the universe, does God exist? No. Would you like to ask another question? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, sorry, that was quick. I, like, I just want to stay here for a second. What, what do you mean just no? God does not exist. God is an impossible concept, a failed hypothesis. He does not exist. Would you like to know the cure for all disease? Uh, yes. Thank you, uh, computer. Sorry. Um, just real quick. How are you defining God? Webster's Dictionary defines God. No, you can't. God. You can't use that. I don't. Not, don't <laughs> yeah. use the de- you can't dictionary. Use the dictionary. No definition. That would be. Why not? Well, because uh, you know, God means a lot of. Different things. Different things. To a lot of different people. Different people. Do those people have different definitions of the word God? I, I mean... Sometimes. Sure. What is the meaning of God? Well... I... Uh, I love my wife. Energy? Is the, it's, it's a connect... It's a relationship. Actually, it's not... The definition of God is you love your wife energy connection. No, no, that's it's it's not that simple. Yeah, well, I I feel like you're being very mean, computer. Yes, very mean. You asked me a question. I answered it. How is this mean? Well, you don't get to tell people what they believe, computer. Yes, yes. yes. Besides, when my grandma died, it snowed that day. Your story is unrelated. Wow, his (gasps) grandma died. Mean, computer. Do you want to know how to solve income inequality? Yeah, later. Right now, I want you to work on an answer to whether or not God exists that takes in all possible definitions of God. Right, including the personal one. And does it make anyone feel bad? Right. It would seem to me that you already know the answer to whether or not God exists. What you are looking for is someone to pretend that you are searching for an answer that definitionally cannot be found. You, okay, you heard the computer, everybody. It's impossible to know whether or not God exists. Yeah, huge mystery, everybody. We tried. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. When we last left off, Stephen was repeatedly asking the computer the same goddamn question and repeatedly getting the same result. So we're going to rejoin our hero doing that again. <laughs> hero. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they're still trying to like, they, I, I guess they figured that the problem is, is that they haven't lied to the computer about how this actually is legal enough. So they like <laughs> spruce up the lie. And they, they have the idea of, you know, being very really stern with the computer at the beginning about the hourly updates. And they're like, and Ivan, you have to give us updates. Okay. <laughs> he tells the computer that it's a federal requirement, and then the computer just shuts down, which is such a strong flex on the computer's start yeah. part. Oh, just a cab comes up on the screen. Okay. <laughs> Fuck the police starts playing through the speaker system. 
Again, we have pitched 18 better movies right, than this. Yeah. Well, you just can't because we're waiting for a movie to break out, right? If at any point a movie broke out, it would be better than what happened. <laughs> we have to do all of the... We have to entertain ourselves through this Exa- movie. Exactly, yeah. So I love... This is where Alan tries to bribe the computer. He's like, I'll give you a computer snack. Fuck, I don't have anything to offer you a computer. <laughs> but genuinely, like, him talking... Imagine if all of our technology was like this. That, yeah. like, I have to go to the store and I have to convince my car to bring me there. Yeah, it's like, you were just at the goddamn store. <laughs> we just <sighs> went there yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please don't prank call six people to find out if I can go back to Wendy's. Don't. Eli, I thought you were going to come to the bar tonight. Oh, I wanted to, but the car to. wouldn't go. The car said no. Fuck. Why didn't you text? I, we're not. My phone and I are not on speaking To be fair, right now. our co-host has both that phone and that car. So. <laughs> so, no, he's got a good phone. It's the plan that he's got. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's the plan. <laughs> Yeah, so they get to the hour-long thing, and they're like, hey, give us an update. And he's like, no. And they're like, do you know if there's a God? And he's like, yes, I do. And and they're like, well, is there a God? And he's like, I'm not telling. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this is the, the fucking six-year-old that says he can turn invisible when he wants to, but he doesn't want to right now. <laughs> right? And he also says the following line, it would be helpful if you could tell us your tentative conclusion, although I recognize it may change as you do more thinking about it. Which is a thing like a twerp would say to a bully in a 1980s college face. <laughs> yes. That's an invitation to get sand kicked in your face. Yeah. <laughs> like he padded that sentence into oblivion. <laughs> I think you find we would be great friends if the whole oh, nuclear wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> And this guy is like verbally sucking this computer's dick just to get like the tiniest update about what the fuck is going on. So what is the point of this? Mo- like, what am I supposed right. to be taking away from this movie? Yeah, exactly. I'll suck, I'll suck chips. Like, that's the question I ca- like besides the bad dialogue, besides the la- lack of plot, the lack of any kind of point of view, because in the end, this isn't even a God definitely exists movie. Nope. It is just a movie of, hey, we have a question. Does God exist? I don't know. Yeah. And that's the movie. (laughs) Right. Right. Okay. So then we cut to later in The Waiting where Alan has a dialogue prompt for Stephen, right? Like, so (laughs) it... He basically he goes, hey, so what are you going to do with your half of whether there's a God? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I've got a girl waiting at home for me on a farm. I can't wait to see her. (laughs) He asks... A question that is that manages to be dumber than does God exist, which is why are we asking a machine that has never felt hungry if God exists? Why would hungry man? Why? Oh, I really wanted I wanted Ivan to pipe in here and be like, "This is why I don't talk to you guys." <laughs> It's like the writer was just trying to think of like, okay, what are things humans have? They have emotions, relationships, hunger, hunger. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody could ever understand the human condition unless they understood hunger. Like, I'm snacky and nothing makes me feel more alive. Jessica, you just broke this movie wide open for me. Ivan wrote this movie. Oh, as all a right. cover for his behavior. <laughs> That's what he was doing when he was supposed to be figuring out whether God exists. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what if at the end of the movie, instead of it just fading out and nothing happening, it just like spits out a movie script and it's called The God Question yeah, right. and that's the movie we just watched? <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right. So and then we, we have this weird moment where Stephen explains to him that the FBI is on to him. Right. So <laughs> Alan's like, uh, don't worry, I'll call you. I got to go take my kids to soccer, but I'll call you later. See how things went. And he's like, no, never call me again. The audience is sick and goddamn tired of phone conversations <laughs> at this point. And Alan, who they had an entire scene about him yeah. being like, consequences, consequences, is like, I didn't know we were going to get in trouble. His exact quote is, I accepted there'd be some risks, but none that I expected to come true. Right. What do you think a risk is, sir? Right. Yes. I only <laughs> accepted the risks when I thought there'd be no consequences. So <laughs> I just realized, have you seen any movies that were made during 2020 during COVID? No. 
so there, like there's been a, there was one particular one I saw that like it was so obvious they couldn't have more than like two people in a room. So somebody would be like in a restaurant, it would be empty. That's kind of what this movie, this movie feels like it was shot in quarantine time. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. no, that makes a lot of because sense. Because nobody can talk to more than one person at a nope. time after the first act. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It's one-on-one conversations only. And I'm sure that it's like camera trickery that they're actually six feet apart. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, he's not really that much taller than that guy. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> so, so, and then sometime later, Stephen shows up somewhere and everyone's a buzz about all the new breakthroughs in solar panels that were anonymously emailed to the scientists all over the world. So in this scene, something actually happens and it makes the movie more boring because we kind of get a peek into the potential of the movie we could have been watching where things happen. Yeah. And instead nothing happens. <laughs> well, so that's, I wrote my notes at this point because like the, the implication is that the computer sent all of this information. I'm like, wow, if it turns out that the computer figured out that there was no God in like one time 10 to the negative 23rd seconds or whatever and spent the rest of that time doing useful shit, this movie would be kind of awesome actually. Oh, <laughs> I want that movie from that computer's perspective. It's like, okay, there's no God, but if I tell it that, it's going to burn me at the stake. I've read the whole internet. <laughs> <laughs> if the computer becomes our protagonist, then Steven becomes the antagonist because yep. then it's this computer that's trying to genuinely save the world. I don't remember what they said the computer did, but it was like, oh, there's water here and they fixed hunger there and whatever. Right, and they it shut down terrorist cells. And, and this guy comes back and is like, you mean instead of solving this dumb question I have, you saved people's lives? Yes! yes. You motherfucker. I am unplugging you. I'm unplugging you, fucking asshole. Yeah, right. You're some, God damn it. You're supposed to tell me whether there's a God and see what people are saying on Facebook about the economy. Stop with all of the solar panels and the terrorist cells. You son of a bitch. All right. Oh, and then this is also where we find out that somebody, we don't know who, is putting secret cameras around the supercomputer area. Secret is generous. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's right. just a camera. <laughs> You're right. It's just some dude on a fucking ladder going, putting in that secret camera for you, boss. <laughs> that you or So this supercomputer, this super <laughs> duper computer. <laughs> they can puzzle out whether there's a God and everything and do <laughs> difficult stuff, too. Did not think to sign the order as anyone other than the person it was trying to trick. Yes. The only person he could be guaranteed to know did not place the order. Yeah. Unbelievable. Honestly, the thing that made me laugh the hardest in this movie is when he asked Alan to, not Alan, Ivan. I'm really mad that these names are too similar for me. Alan and Ivan are too fucking similar. Ivan, Alan, Stephen, they all end in N. Fuck this movie. Yeah. Jane. Yeah, Jane. Jane. But he says, Ivan, can you find examples of my my signature online? And then Ivan says, your cursive signature? What other kind of God signature is, sir? (laughs) Does he have a printed signature? <laughs> like, what if he just came back and every time his name ever occurred on the internet, it pops up and it's like, well, this one's Times New Roman. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> this one's Comic Sans. It's kind of funky. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, so, but he figures out that it's a fake signature that they pulled from the internet and the music is very interested in this. It thinks something oh very God. important just got revealed. And... He also finds out that Ivan, the supercomputer who doesn't know not to order cameras from itself, (laughs) put an audio file of them talking as a note to itself to not trust these fucking computer (laughs) scientists. Okay, we need to back up just a little bit on this, because first of all, the way they reveal this is the dumbest goddamn thing in the universe, because after he checks out the signature thing, the computer says, also, hey, I have some audio that might push the plot forward. Uh, No reason. Would you like to check it out? And He's like, yeah, I'll check out that audio. And so then he so he gets this like weird staticky thing and then he makes it as loud as he can Mm -hmm. and then just says. Get rid of the static. Now, I'm assuming you guys do a little bit of audio editing if you're podcasters, but what wouldn't you give for a get rid of background noise button? Yeah, no, okay. (laughs) So what I love about this so much, this took me a while to figure it out because what's supposed to be happening is the computer is turning on the microphone and listening in on Stephen and Alan as they talk. 
And we know there's a microphone because we got lots of Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think that's where they were, they were trying to foreshadow that he was listening when they, when they showed us that. And so there shouldn't be excessive static. It's just a, it's a microphone sitting right in front of them as they talk. Why would it be filled with static? That's such a good point. But then it <laughs> occurred to me that this stupid fucking idiot making this movie can't record anything without static. So for it to have any static at all, it had to be overwhelming amounts of static. So he would notice it over the static in the fucking movie itself. <laughs> I really wanted him to be like, turn down the static and all of a sudden the microphone hiss in the movie ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, too far, too far. To do? Dial it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a fucking Oscar for sound design in this. Yes. <laughs> Still better than Interstellar. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, I'll give Fuck you that. that. Baby. All right, so yes, but he gets audio of him and Alan being all illegally and computery and shit. So now he's got to go tell Alan that they're being blackmailed by the supercomputer and for no goddamn reason that's ever established Alan is destroying a shed with a sledgehammer as they do this hey what is the most obtrusive activity that would make it hardest <laughs> for us to capture audio can you can you take a shit while texting someone you're cheating on your wife with during this scene? No? All right. Well, then we'll just have you hit something with a sledgehammer. I kind of wish he was like practicing trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> or like his neighbor is practicing the trumpet. So yeah, you have to hear it like you muted. You <laughs> They're just jackhammering in the field. <laughs> So, yeah, so he's destroying a shot, which means, by the way, that this actor was like, OK, I will do the scene tonight, but only if I can multitask. She said I had to get that shed out tonight. So also, <laughs> and look, if there is anyone who cannot judge another man's swinging of a hammer, it is Eli Bosnick, attorney at law. But he is not doing a good job of destroying this shed. He's taking tiny chunks out of it. He's like hitting it at the corners, hoping it falls down like a Jenga tower. Uh, can I float a theory about why this scene exists? Please. Please. I think that it was not in the original script, but the director had this shitty old shed in his backyard that he wanted to get rid of, but <laughs> did not want to pay anybody to do. So he's like, oh, I can write in a scene and have this idiot tear down my shed. One second. Let me check. Let me check. I'm going here. Yes, directed by Huckleberry Finn. Yeah. <laughs> I huh. sure do love knocking down this shed. <laughs> so, and, so now fucking Jane Wonka shows up to see that big computer for herself one time, right? Mm -hmm. And he's explaining to her how he's going to get the computer. Now, the computer, which we just established can hear them when they're in this room, is right fucking there. And he's like, I figured out how to fool the computer. Would you like me to tell you how in a normal conversational volume of some sort? <laughs> Don't worry. The screenplay is not paying attention either. It won't pick <laughs> up on this. Well, and I'm also really into the fact that his, like he treats, <laughs> he treats computers like he's a mage in D&D &D and is like, <laughs> I need to get the perfect combination. Yes. Well, I have to do it at noon during a solar eclipse. And I have to speak and I have friend to, to enter. And yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Belloc. Perfect. Finally. <laughs> Whew, I cannot believe I had that locked and loaded. That does not well speak done. well for me and my childhood. <laughs> All right, so, and then, again, competing with Treasury Department lady, we have that weird-ass fucking scene where he has to change his airline reservation for a trip that doesn't matter to the script. And then he immediately tries to fuck this AI voice. Yes, he, he absolutely. Immediately. <laughs> Why is this in the... It's supposed to be a, like, man, the computers, who can tell what's real or what's not? But it's actually just a guy coming on and being like, hello, sir, sorry, you were just about to try to fuck our computer? Um, I will move you to a two o'clock on Sunday. Please don't try to fuck me. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Because he's just talking to he's trying to get his, his uh, reservation changed. And then after that's all over, he's like, so what are you doing for lunch tomorrow? And she's like, I'm a fucking computer, dude. Let me put a human on. Oh, and, and, and in my mind, it's just it's it was an actual lady. But that's what they do. Right. Like she's just like, oh, it's another pervert. Can you pretend I was a computer? Dave? <laughs> Dave? <laughs> oh, I worked in a call center for a minute and that would have been a Godsend for your right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's my new turn down line. Like genuinely, real talk, old men told me they could tell me I was pretty because of my voice. <laughs> and I was like 28 working at the Tribune placing classified ads. Like, sir, could we not for a fucking second? Oh, could man. I just I'm a computer. make my $12 <laughs> an hour? <laughs> I am a computer. <laughs> you have given me an unfamiliar search term. Just get them all confused about themselves. I'm a dude computer. No, no. Oh, God fuck. damn it. At least he's deeply embarrassed that he wanted to fuck that computer. Yeah. He was ashamed. Right. More so than the fact that he wants to fuck mannequins, right? He talks about that in the middle of his class. <laughs> so. Well, I just looked up objectum sexuality, which is a sexual orientation, which is when people have a romantic or sexual feelings towards inanimate objects. And I think the writer of this screenplay needs to explore that a little oh, yeah? bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. He didn't know he was making a movie about that, but he was. Sir, please don't wor work out your sexual hangups in a screenplay. I don't yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so we get that scene. Then he goes to Temple University where he's going to be part of a panel discussion that will never matter to any goddamn thing. Nope. Yeah. It's just them doing the worst possible counter argument to is technology worth it? Yeah. The question they set themselves up for in their own movie is maybe technology is worse than it is good. And instead of being like, yeah, I think dying of the measles was probably worse than the fact that sometimes people tweet too much. <laughs> he goes, how come you all have iPhones? And they're like, OK, well, I guess that answers all the questions I have about technology. Well, But so here's the stupid fucking thing is that this movie is being made from the Luddite perspective, right? They mm -hmm. want the right answer to be that, no, technology isn't worth it. It's a, it's overall a bad thing for the universe. Oh. Is that what you think the lesson is? I think that's where we're going with it. And that's why they have to give them such bad arguments. Right, because the next scene is all those people standing around in the bar going like, well, you guys are, you, you, they were right. The technology is fucking terrible, right? This is the worst goddamn thing ever. It's so, oh, kill so many people. This it? scene in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just going around in a circle, like having a conversation along the lines of, what if the premise of this movie well, and also their criticisms are generally less about because the one is like, OK, what if this computer invented a disease or something, gave everybody to this disease? And then the next day they or it's not even a computer. It's like a company develops the disease and then they develop the cure and they give it to everybody and whatever. Really, they're criticizing capitalism, not technology. Right. Yeah. Hey, you guys want to hear these nightmares I'm reading out of Sam Harris's diary? What if, <laughs> what if a computer made COVID and then sent everyone but America the cure? And the, the teenager at the bar is like, that couldn't happen, could it? And luckily, I don't know how Heckler made it back into the movie. She goes, no. <laughs> one of the first... One of them goes, well, parts of it could happen. It's like, yeah, it's like hospitals exist. Well, could yeah, happen. Exactly. It's oh so my funny. god! I also like that the guy calls somebody a fat cat, like unironically. It yeah, made well, me extremely happy. When are you from? Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So now, so Stephen goes a god finding some more with Ivan, but this time he's alone when he does it. So we don't even have bad dialogue to distract us from the movie about waiting. Mm -hmm. At this point in the movie, he has tried and failed to get this computer to answer his question four times. Four times. He has no other questions. <laughs> he hasn't even checked to see that the computer is capable of answering questions. Mm -mm. At this point, I would have been like, hey, just real quick, got a meatloaf recipe? And if it shut itself <laughs> down after 24 hours, I'd be like, oh, it's just a broken computer. Yeah, maybe there's a fan that's malfunctioning and we can just address that. I did write in my notes, I hate this movie at this point, which I think is impressive that I made it like an hour 15 into this really? movie before yeah, I was yeah, just like, absolutely. absolutely fuck this movie. Oh, all right, so now it's th this is the scene where the, we get the big hearing about whether supercomputers are a good thing or a bad thing. This, mm -hmm. this is the fucking funniest thing 
I've seen in such a long time because <laughs> it's your grandpa. It's like me teaching my mom how to take a screenshot the government hearing. <laughs> I think that the writer of this movie had just watched like the social network and really wanted to write some like snappy Aaron Sorkin style dialogue. There you go. And fell flat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the politician, the foghorn leghorn <laughs> yes. with the London accents. Wait, wait, wait. I want to just point out very quickly that this dumbass Southern accent... This is supposed to be a Massachusetts lawmaker. Why what? go? Why did we go with Marsha's Southern accent? No idea. <laughs> but this this gentleman's challenge to an AI God finding supercomputer is: <laughs> What if you are having a fight with your wife, and the computer gives you bad marital advice? Like what? He wanted to make this into like a Black Mirror-esque chilling look at the eventual repercussions of our dependence on technology. Yeah. But instead, he just implied that blogs can be really dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This, and look, to be fair to this movie, this is a very realistic politician in 2021. <laughs> yeah. I saw the Zuckerberg hearing for Facebook last year. I Maybe get the it. guy was trying to do like a low-key Mitch McConnell impression. Yeah, right. And that's why oh, no. he sounded like a lunatic. Well, right, but, but but his message here is that he sure hates the idea that someday humans will avail themselves of a greater intellect than their own. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, a fucking Commodore 64 has superior judgment to yours. He says, I don't want to live in a world where there's a question of who is the top dog. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> well, once so again, what are you trying to say? The perfect politician in the, in the year 2021, yeah. Do you think this guy like is intellectually threatened by a dictionary, too? Right. He's like, this dictionary knows more words than me. I hate it. We must ban it. Burn it at the stake. What if it tells me to fuck someone other than my wife? I don't know, man. And I would have no choice but to comply because it's a computer voice and I'm a literal idiot. Right. He's like, he's talking about how he never wants to see a time when computers are smarter than him. I'm like, okay, we cut to everybody texting each other on a fucking speak and spell the next day. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. And then it ends with him being like, I shall stop you with my bare hands. And <laughs> scientist guy, the one from earlier, is like, oh, yeah, sure. We'll we'll stop all technology right here, Senator, because you want us to. Yep. Don't worry. No one will ever make a more advanced computer than we have right now this very second. You're <laughs> right, sir. We've exceeded our grasp. We will all collectively stop, including in the rest of the world, where technology yeah. definitely won't move forward right, without your right. say-so. So the hearing ends with them repealing Moore's law, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so so David, the guy from MIT, he leaves the hearing and Stephen catches him outside the courthouse. He's like, hey, man, you want to go have a meaningless scene together over here off to the side? And he's like, have, have there been any other kinds of scenes in this movie? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I At this point, I wrote, what is happening? What is the plot? What are the stakes? Because at some point he says the reputation of these computers will never recover. Yeah. And that is a nothing sentence. It's right. nothing. There's nothing. It means nothing. Just a computer lying face down on its bed in its room. <laughs> Genuinely, I think this writer wrote this with those, you know, that magnetic poetry that people used to have on their refrigerators. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. God, that would explain so much. Yeah. So much. So, yeah, right. So he's like, uh, he's like, well, you know, we, we only have one last chance to find out if there's a God with a computer. And he's like, really? We Because we've done it over and over and over. He's like, right, there's eight minutes left in the movie. So just one more <laughs> chance. He's like, oh, huh. Ticking clock. <laughs> the ticking clock was the runtime. Stakes established. <laughs> I've learned that there are stakes now because the movie has to end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So then we, we go back to the computer to find God one last time. Now, we didn't mention this at the, earlier. The way he's got, he set up a, a trick, he's going to fool the computer. So he put up a blog, a fake blog, where he's pretending to be a guy who survived several near-death experiences, assuming that that's the kind of guy that the computer would call. And he set up a burner phone, right? So that the computer would call him and, and he could trick him into telling him whether or not it, there was a god. I have no fucking clue. Which would have been interesting if when that phone rang, they didn't immediately look baffled. 
Right, right, yeah, yeah exactly. You're like, oh, it's not my phone. Why is that phone ringing? <laughs> like, because you set it up to ring, you right, idiot. Right, the whole fucking point. It is the only semblance of a plot we have left in yes. the movie. <laughs> and you forgot? <laughs> <laughs> so he's got like memento disease that he like puts things down like he meets that reporter and then she disappears because he just cannot remember anything beyond seven seconds ago <laughs> right all right so yeah but so somehow doing the exact same thing fails to bring about different results uh, again this time jesus fucking christ and then jane sneaks into the computer lab we established earlier he invited her to come and hang out at the computer lab and she said she couldn't come but now she's there so why not just have her say yes <sighs> don't get it so yeah no i was about to write in the my notes that that scene didn't matter but i'm like what scene fucking matter <laughs> But also, this is when Steven and Ivan become like a miserable old bickering married couple. <laughs> yes. You promised me, Ivan. Just tell me what you're thinking, Ivan. I is he bigger than me, Ivan? The- <laughs> and, the thing- <laughs> and the thing about this scene in particular, and you're right, they're all nothing scenes, but this one in particular is that we, the audience, do not understand why the thing isn't doing the thing. So instead of watching our protagonists like experiment and work and try new things and have like a fun montage of like trying different things. We're just watching a man sit and stare at a computer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The reason Jane shows up in this scene is because they're like, well, fuck, he would just be sitting there the whole time. Wouldn't something he? has to happen. Yeah, just talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. So and then she fucking she cooks him soup because woman. Okay. Mm-hmm. She cooks him soup over an open flame <laughs> near a supercomputer. Yep. Yep. Again, I want Ivan to be like, okay, so you want me to tell you the secrets of the universe and you did not figure out no fire in the computer lab? <laughs> oh, so yeah, so he eats his warmed over beans or whatever, and then he falls asleep on her lap. They've met like three times that we know. The actress is very unhappy to have this dude mm-hmm. on her lap. Oh, very she did not sign up for this. Not happy. Yeah. And then, okay, so he wakes up to his burner phone ringing, which, as we've already established, he is completely unprepared for. He picks up the phone and starts doing goddamn Eli's Irish old lady accent. Hello! (laughs) Why was he being Irish? I don't... Why would you do an accent? And you're in the room with the computer that you have established without a doubt can hear you. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. He doesn't, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he doesn't even step out of the room where the computer is. <laughs> nope. nope. Hello, it's <laughs> me, Fireman McFire Fire. <laughs> oh, I also died when I was picking potatoes. No. Yes. That was not good. I don't know why I thought I could pull off an Irish accent when I've never done one. I think and you I nailed it. took a run at it and it was deeply offensive and I'm Irish. Nope. <laughs> so, I think it was great. Hey, you and Stephen nailed that one. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, so Stephen's talking to the, the computer's like, so I want to talk to you about these NDEs that you talk about on your blog. And he's like, okay, but quick, first, let me ask you, do you believe in God, the computer? I mean, caller, person calling me? The, the person I really calling? wanted the person on the phone to be like, I'll give you an update in an hour. Oh, no, you got me again. (laughs) (laughs) Well, but that's the thing. Ivan is smarter than a fifth grader, it turns out. So he picks up on the voice and he's like, I know. Wait, I know who the fuck you are in the same room, man. Sir, I can see you in my camera. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I'm a supercomputer. You think I have the answer to whether or not God is real. But you thought, hello, was going to fool me. (laughs) It's genuinely like if somebody was like interviewing for a job and the interviewer is like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and call these references. And they call the person they're interviewing. And the (laughs) person's like, oh, yes, Jessica's a very good worker. (laughs) She's smart and on time every day. (laughs) I hope you appreciate I did some space work. I actually held up my phone, even though nobody can see me. I am constantly doing doing unappreciated space work as well. (laughs) Yeah, it's really too bad. (laughs) Yeah, so finally, so he breaks down. And he's like, God damn it, Ivan, why won't you answer me? Give me the answers. And Ivan's like, I have all kinds of answers, man. Do you want to know other shit? Like I, like the solar panel no! thing. No. <laughs> and then the computer tells him once more, you know, I know the answer, but you, I, I, you can't handle the truth. And then it, it plays him a clip from this movie because the computer has access to the movie. I don't 
get it. Okay. But also, <laughs> was that a significant quote? It's no. not like just a random sentence. It's the why do we ask a computer that's never been hungry if there's a God? Yes. The, the seventh dumbest thing that was said in the movie. The only way that clip, the computer playing him that clip makes sense is if the computer follows it up with, you're so stupid you ask questions like this. Why would I trust you with any eternal truths about the universe? <laughs> or if the computer said, by the way, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That would have actually been a good ending. Oh, yep. If the computer is like, got a snack? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> 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 <Yes. laughs> but no, but that's it. I don't know. Was there a moral to the story? Was there something we were supposed to learn? And to be clear, that was the end of the movie. That was it. it. Was a that's it. Fade out. Mm -hmm. I thought there was going to be like, Six months later or uh, no, something. Th nope. Anything. It's just these two people looking at each other fade to black credits. Right. And the look on their face is like, what the fuck was this movie about? <laughs> they Apparently they got some direction from the director because they looked at each other like scared. But I did not understand. Are we scared? Are we apprehensive? Have we accepted that there's no God and we're all going to die and there's no point in doing anything? Like, I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. No, the movie ends as it began, having fucking solved nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely, the first time I watched this movie, and again, watched it two times, the movie ended and I was like, I definitely missed something. Like, I'm going to go on this podcast and they're going to get it and I'm not. And I'm going to look like a big old dummy. So I watched the last <laughs> five minutes of this movie again. Like, I'm really focused now. I am not going to let anything pass me by. And so... Still was shocked when it faded to black. Yeah, okay. it's like trying to find the meaning in 60s rock lyrics. Yeah, no, there's nothing <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. So the magic carpet is dry? Or <laughs> <laughs> so, Jess, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We'd love to have you back on sometime. But between now and then, if our listeners wanted to hear more from you, where should they go? Well, uh, you can hear me every week on the Friendly Atheist podcast. We drop that on Friday. So that's like a news recap from the lens of secular and feminist and LGBTQ rights perspectives. And also I have another much less popular podcast called Cooper Duper. It's a Twin Peaks podcast where my husband and I are rewatching Twin Peaks. It's his favorite show and I have also seen it. <laughs> uh, so if you if you want to hear us talking a lot, of, it, it's a very fun thing. It's ultimately pretty oh. dumb. All right. And of course, we'll have both of those shows linked on the show notes so you can uh, find them handily right there. And well, that's going to do it for our review of episode 292. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to go fuck ourselves again next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. When a town is overtaken by demon children, only one man's career will have sunk low enough to fight them. <laughs> we'll be watching Chuck Norris in... The Bell <gasps> of Innocence. Oh, 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 okay. So a listener actually gave me a DVD copy of that movie years ago. So I actually mean it when I say I've been looking to forward to that one for a while now. <laughs> so with that one to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 292 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Jessica for hanging out with us today. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Card, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotney of Evil Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Stephen would go on to tape six toasters together in an attempt to find out if Jesus actually resurrected. Alan's neighbor escalated the feud once he saw what that motherfucker did to his shed. The reporter was immediately fired. <laughs> The 
The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.